Hello, and thank you for joining me. Our gospel passage today is one we know well. It's the first of Jesus' parables, I think, that I remember learning at my first school. Now, childhood memories can be a dangerous thing. They can be fickle and lead us, if we're unwary, to places that we've never been or to events which, if they happened at all, happened very differently from our recollections. But this is one of two passages in the Bible. The other is Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, which never failed to take me straight back to that first school. And I'm sitting cross-legged on the rather dusty, splintery wooden floor, a serious incentive not to fidget, listening to my teacher reading to us. A sower went out to sow. Now, we all understand, I think, that Jesus used parables, everyday stories which put an unexpected twist on familiar events, as a way of challenging his listeners to think out of the box. Only rarely did he explain them, except, of course, to his close disciples. And I think he was hoping that the parables would stay in people's minds, and perhaps, too, that each would speak to every individual in their own individual way. But in this case, he did explain, and we have the explanation in the Gospel, so I don't think I need to labour that point further. Instead, I thought I'd take a leaf out of Jesus' book and tell you a modern parable and see how it speaks to us in the strange times that we're living in. Google monkeys, bananas and cold water and you'll get a number of versions of an experiment which may have been done by behavioural scientists a few years ago. Whether it ever happened exactly that way or like Jesus' parables is just a good story I'm really not sure. But it is a good story. And it goes like this. Some scientists put five monkeys in a large cage. In the middle of the roof of the cage, they hung a bunch of ripe bananas, below which they put a ladder which would allow the monkeys to reach the bananas. Before long, sure enough, one of the monkeys began to climb the ladder. Whereupon the scientists doused all five of them with cold water. A while later, after they dried off, another monkey got brave and tried, and again all five were given a soaking. Before long, if any monkey started up the ladder, the others would immediately drag it back down before they got wet. Eventually, all the monkeys gave up and stop trying to reach the bananas. After a while, the scientists removed one of the monkeys and replaced it with a new one. Knowing no better, the new monkey began to climb up to get to the bananas, whereupon it was set upon by the rest, dragged down again and generally duffed up. Without knowing why, it quickly learned that the bananas were off limits. A while later again, the scientists replaced a second monkey, and the same thing happened. Now I suspect you can see where this is going. By the end, all five original monkeys had been replaced. None of the monkeys now in the cage had ever been doused with cold water. None of the monkeys any more tried to reach the bananas. And all of them would attack any other that tried. And I'm tempted to stop at that point and say, like Jesus, let anyone with ears listen. However, I first came across that story some years ago. And I tell it now because it's come back to me more than once during the conversations we've had about how we begin to feel our way towards what is becoming known as the new normal after lockdown. You see, for me, that passage of the, sorry, the message of the story is that throughout our lives, whether at work or at home or 
across society. Much of what we do, we do because we always have. Much of it we do for good reason. But for much too, the reason is long forgotten and possibly no longer relevant. I once heard of a lady who always cut the parson's nose off a chicken before roasting it. Asked why, she could only say, well, that's what her mother always did. So she asked her mother why she did it, only to get the same answer. So finally they asked her elderly grandmother. Oh, that's easy, she said. When I was growing up, Mum only had a small roasting tin. And that was the only way most chickens would fit in it. Old habits die hard. Mention change in the Church of England. And most people will run a mile. Well, my dear friends, look around you. All of us are now doing things in ways which, at the turn of this year, we could not possibly have imagined. We've managed that because by mid-March it became clear that the alternative was unthinkable. And as the saying goes, when you're up to your backside in alligators, you tend to forget about draining the pool. We had no choice but to change, quickly, drastically. Bishop Stephen has said since that we achieved changes in 10 weeks that would otherwise have taken us 10 years, and I think he was right. Well, now some of the restrictions are starting to be relaxed. Slowly, cautiously, we're opening our church buildings. We're again meeting to worship God collectively, as we all know we were meant to do. We proceed slowly, cautiously, lest a new spike overwhelms us. But that also gives us time to think. We've learnt that we can change. Now we have the time to choose how to do it. We've recently taught the children in our schools the story of old Simeon waiting each day in the temple for the promised Messiah. We remember his words, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. But we sometimes forget the ending. This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. The tiny baby in Mary's arms would turn the world to which he had come upside down. And in a rather different way, the pandemic is doing the same now. So as we come, slowly, cautiously, out of lockdown, my plea to you all is this. See this as an opportunity. Think about how things used to be, about what we used to do. Think what was truly of value, what should be preserved and cherished. But think also about what is no longer relevant, what we still do out of habit, because we always did. Think about what we've learned to do new or better during the lockdown. Think about the sort of church you want to belong to going forward. What you want it to look like, what you want it to stand for. What you want it to do? What part are you willing to play in achieving that vision? Nothing is off limits and everyone has a role to play. I've recently started watching the TV shows where Gareth Malone is writing songs with people who've been affected by the pandemic about their experiences. 
the phrase from the first of them spoken by a young nurse which has stuck in my mind is this only ever look back to see how far we've come and i think i would add to that now and to learn how far we could go God bless. Amen.